Don't ever think you have arrived. And don't consider yourself to be a sponsor of God. Nobody can sponsor God. When you are prepared to give to God, don't let it go into your head. And don't pray politics with kingdom giving. The place that has blessed you, give. Give there. You, because the kingdom giving, it goes with principles. It has, I don't want to take you there now. So the first step is that you must be convinced that God wants to prosper me. If you don't get that conviction and you are double-minded about, eh, I don't want to get blessed and pro, I don't want to get blessed and backslide. Hey, if I'm a talker, permit to me, mom, pay. Church room, I'm here. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm a car, 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 I'm a With that mindset, there's nothing God can do. There is nothing God can do to change your destiny. And the way Babylon 2 is fighting our prosperity, that does not also mean that you must do it in haste and in a crooked way. Oh, oh. <laughs> ah, all those who are trying to do it crooked way, they are not clapping. Mm. Some people don't believe that God has anything to do with their money. But he has everything to do with your money. Yeah. Some people don't believe it. They think that I have to work hard and make my money. No. 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 That's a greater mistake you made. That's why I say we should pray. Some people just believe that God has, God has nothing to do with my money. I'm the one who must work. God has something to do with your money. Deuteronomy 8.18 Put it very clear. But thou shalt remember the Lord your God. For it is he that giveth thee power to get what? Wealth. Who gives you the power to get wealth? You remember what I told you this morning? The reason all our money is for God, whatever you have in your bank account, the reason is for God is that there is something you have or there is something you are using now that belongs to God. That, that condition of us makes everything we have belongs to God. I don't care how much you have, the oxygen you are breathing is for God. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when God pulls his oxygen from your nose, then whatever you have becomes useless. So that is why I said the silver and the gold are mine. It means that your money can buy anything but not oxygen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that makes us become a possessor of everything but still worse of nothing. Whatever we have, we have it for the benefit of others. God blesses you so that you become a blessing. The purpose of your blessing is that you become a blessing. The purpose of your blessing is that you become what the blessing. That is what God told Abraham. Genesis chapter 12 and verse number 2. That is what God. That was the condition around. I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. That thou shalt be what? A blessing. So the reason I'm blessing you Abraham is that you will become a blessing. So when God blesses you and you are not a blessing, he cut it. That is why three days ago I told you about the deviation. When the lepers went to the place and they saw the booty, then they were only thinking about themselves. They take it, they eat it, they go high. They take it, they eat it, they go high. But they don't know that the accent that has happened, they are fulfilling the prophetic word. So sometimes eh, your blessing is just that you will be put on the track to fulfill a prophetic word. So you are just, when the prophetic word was walking and moving around and scanning, it landed on your head. So the, purpose, the reason why suddenly God is blessing you is that on God's timetable, you must fulfill a prophecy. Yeah. Once you start having distorted mind and thinking that I work hard to get it, you are digging your grave. That is why any time God commanded me to give, I never struggle with him. Never. Give me this, close this bank account. I just do it. Give this car straight. I just do it. I mean, one day God told me to give a car to a man of God and I was struggling. The Lord told me that. If you sit in a car and you even arrive, it's my protection. That means that sometimes when God tells you to give a car, it is possible the car is on a death sentence. Mm -hmm. Once he lifts your hand, the thing is cancelled. God can give you another car. But you give it. Now listen, anytime God asks you for a seed, he has a harvest in mind. Mm. <laughs> Once the earth remains, seed time and harvest time. Can I say that again? Any time God asks you for a seed, he has a harvest in mind. Because he said, no, oh, no man, anything. That's a blessing. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 18. God has something to, thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee power to what? And so that you will do what? He will establish his covenant, which is swear unto your fathers. So the kingdom prosperity eh, 
It is not a promise, so it does not answer to prayer. No matter how you pray, if you don't give, nothing will happen. It is a covenant, so it's a response to obedience. Can I say that again? Maybe you get it. The kingdom prosperity is not a promise, so it does not respond to prayer. Prayer only breaks the demonic hand that is fighting the thing. But you must give to get a harvest. So it responds to obedience. So what is it? When Abraham obeyed God to sacrifice Isaac, God swear. He swear. I swear by myself that because of the way you have obeyed me in blessing, I'll bless you. Because why did God swear? Because it is not Abraham that willingly wanted to give to God. It was not a God loves a cheerful giver. God commanded him to kill a son. So there are giving a there is what we call God loves a cheerful giver. You give because you, you, you come to church, you are giving offering, you put your hand in your pocket, one, 200 note, 100 note, 150, 110, one, uh, five, one, two, then you take the two, cheerful giving. Maybe you near Hawaii, then you come and drop the two, fine. You don't have a problem. That giving, I mean, fine. They that give sparingly will receive sparingly. They that give bountifully will receive bountifully. Okay. Another person also give thousand out of that. Then God reward. But the serious one, the one that launched you out of poverty, mm. is the one that you start praying, God bless me. Oh God, what should I want to? Sometimes, literally, when I wake up, I pray and ask God, who do you want me to bless today? Is there anybody that you want me to reach the person? Is there any man of God? Ask mommy. Last week, I told mommy that we have to give this man of God this. Because whilst I was praying, the Lord told me, send this thing to this man of God. Oh, it's not this. Is it, is it this week or last week? Last week. And then I called him. I said, and I spoke to him and I said this. Send this thing. Because whilst I was praying, I asked the Lord, can I fulfill a prophecy today? What are the things I can do? Is there anybody you want to meet their needs? That you know that in my capacity I can help. Then the Lord pointed, he said, this man of God. When I gave you, call me back. This one, the man of God said, send me a testament. He said, Anna, I know you are a prophet. This one, what you did, you just heard from God. So you get it. Now God's name is glorified. It helps somebody to believe that his prayer can be answered. So God, God scans the thing. Now you are not there yet. Because the one God said, give you the crown. Eh. So I said, wake up and pray. Who do you want me to give? I refuse to pray that prayer. No, when you come to that room, you will do it. I'm telling you what I do. But... <laughs> But the one I'm talking about is the kind of giving that the one that lets you pass the test and the heavens open on your head is the one that God commands you. Yes, sir. When God tells you, give this thing to this. Give. Last year, a young man brought me a car and he said he heard God clear telling him that he should give the car. He even bought a black one. And he found out that I like white colors. So he's going to change it to bring a white one. But he said, after I give you the car, the heavens open. Now, I don't want to tell you what God, uh, God is doing in his life, but it's marvelous. So, something must be open for heaven, but the point of contact is a car. And the car is that I was praying to God and I said, Lord, thank you for this particular car you gave to me. The last one you gave me was 12 years ago. Is it possible for you to bless me with another one? I was fasting. Then the Lord heard it. So the Lord said, okay, you need a breakthrough. Send this car to this person. I never asked him. I didn't even know him. I was real close to him at that time. He was real close to me. He said he just fell. When he called, he told mommy and said, I know Papa just returned from prayer. But can I take two minutes of your time, mommy? I want to drop something. And two minutes, I'll be there. He just dropped the car and left. And the heavens open. That is how the kingdom thing works. That is how it works. You have to first believe. Hallelujah. You cannot be stingy and walk in certain dimensions of blessing. Number two, the reason for the giving is that the giving protects the rest. So, what's it is? Once God finds out that he can depend on you to bless others, then he becomes possessive of what you have. And he jealously protects it. When God jealously protects your wealth, anybody that comes around and God can kill the person. Is. So, you see, you cannot touch Abraham. You can't touch Isaac. Jacob, Laban tried. One day, when, 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 when Jacob stole away, eh? Jacob, the way he ran, he was stole away. He stole away. When he stole away, Laban was on his way. He said, this guy will kill him. He was there. God met him in the night. 
Nobody saw the encounter, but when labor came, he said that the God of your fathers met me. You can imagine God meeting a man. And he said, God warned him that don't speak anything good or bad. Don't tell him he's a nice boy. Don't tell him he's a bad boy. He said, I don't want to hear anything good or bad from your mouth. Don't say anything good or bad to, to uh, what do we call it? Jacob. The reason I'm not killing is because he's married to your sons, your daughters. But it's, Laban said, the God of your fathers met me. He said, it is in the power of my hand to do you harm. That was what, by the God of your father. So when he planned the thing and he didn't say, God came down. Yeah. Now hear this. Hear this. This is where things like paying your tithe and giving occasionally as God demands helps. Because it makes God protect what you have. It is dangerous to have prosperity and you don't have defense. Now, let me tell you something about kingdom prosperity. The devil was shooting arrows around Job. The arrows were not working. When the arrows returned back to him, whatever was not making the arrows work, Satan says it's a hedge. That name hedge, it is not God that said it's a devil. Have you not make a hedge around him? Whatever the devil saw, he called it hedge. Now, for the devil to get to Job, God must lift the hedge. So God told the, the devil that he is already in your hands. I have lifted the hedge. Do what you want to do. It is when the hedge was lifted that Job's property started getting destroyed. As long as the hedge is there, there was no destruction. I'm teaching. Divine settlement. We need to get this thing for where we are going. It is dangerous to be blessed and disconnected from God. You expose yourself, you become vulnerable. And the devil can just wipe you off completely. So, he said, have you not made hedge around? So, God put a hedge and he gave the devil access. And then God put a limit. Huh? He said, touch everything, but don't touch his life. Mm. Don't touch his life. So, there was even a limit to where the devil can go. If God doesn't give him a limit. So, let me tell you something. The reason you need a protection is that when you prosper, you the spirit of poverty in your household and the authors of poverty don't like it. Because some of you want to prosper, then you are changing the history. And one thing tradition doesn't like is to change history. Stop clapping, let me show you this. A new move has come, a new dispensation has come. It is true that in the, in the time of the law, the Sabbath day, you don't kill somebody. And Jesus said that, even though it's hypocrisy, because some of you were. When your donkey falls into the pit, you go and lift him. So if I heal somebody, a donkey that is falling and a man that is, which one is better? So the Sabbath was made for the man, but no man for the Sabbath. Jesus is the one that said it. Now watch this. The reason they were holding on to that thing was tradition. So they mixed that tradition with hypocrisy. When the spirit of tradition descends on you, you don't like change. This is the way we want it. This is the way we dress. This is the way we move. We don't want you to change. Tradition. And Jesus said, tradition make the word of God of none effect. So you make the word of God of none effect by the tradition of your father. Why did you make it none effect? You start fighting God for what he's doing. And yeah, nobody fight God and win. So the Pharisees, they never won. Jesus called them hypocrites. He said, you, you are like sepulchres. You are like white tombs. This is a huge strong words for them. Because they hold on to tradition. If you hold on to tradition of poverty in your background, you will not step into prosperity. Mm. I'm teaching. Tell your neighbor, be convinced that God wants to bless you. And God has something to do with your money because I am the Lord that gives you what? Power to prosper. All of us, anything in our bank account, God gave us the power to hold it. Yes, sir. Hey, I know you are not clapping, but the way you drove your car from town to here, it is God that protected you. Yeah. Mm? Amen. Wow. 